Tarek, thank you for doing this. Thank you for being a part of this interview with Interview Kickstart. So a quick introduction. Tarek is a software engineer in test at Twitter. Um, Tarek is all, has also been an instructor with Udemy for over two years and an instructor with Interview Kickstart and saving the best for last. You're a US soccer, play, uh, soccer referee. That's quite interesting. Are you still doing yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I just got my my license in, in February. Nice. So uh, I've been riffing for for a few years right now. Uh, nice. But uh, but officially, yeah, <laughs> since February this year. All right. So, um, Tariq, let's get started with you know your journey as a test engineer. So. What was what was what gave you the conviction, or what were the few things that influenced your decision to go down this career path of you know being a test automation engineer? Yeah, uh, it was kind of uh, a coincidence, honestly. At the beginning, uh, I had a few years of experience as a as a software engineer, and then as a business analyst. This is in 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 the Middle East between Qatar and Jordan, before I moved to the U.S. in mm -hmm. 2013. Mm -hmm. I moved to the U.S. in 2013. I did master's in cloud computing. And then uh, I finished. And then I started looking for, for jobs. And uh, at a career fair at, our, at my school, uh, I saw this company. And they were uh, hiring for uh, ISDET, software mm -hmm. engineering test. I wasn't familiar with this type of work. Uh, ahead of time, I was familiar with the like regular quality assurance engineer, but the the engineer and test with its duties I wasn't familiar with. So I liked the role, I liked the company because they were doing also cloud computing related uh, uh, softwares and, and and toolings. So I applied and uh, they accepted me. And this is my first company in the US. Okay. Uh, the company name is Turbonomic. Yeah. So I started with them and I I, I loved it. And I'm, I stayed within the uh, automation uh, environment since then. All right, great. So Tariq, back then, what were some of the, or actually, um, you know, let's start talking about, you know, you your, your journey at Twitter. So what were the few resources that you used to prepare for your interview uh, with Twitter? I think this was around three years back. Correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, so from, from the coding perspective, uh, probably a lot of people are aware of, of lead code. Mm -hmm. It's some, somehow an industry standard right now for people to, to prepare for coding exercises regardless of the role. And uh, I use that a lot to to brush up my knowledge in, in, in data structures and algorithms and increase my speed in, in solving the, the questions. And uh, from the behavioral side, it's just like reading a lot of articles online, researching topics, uh, watching YouTube videos and on various topics when it comes to how to test certain applications mm -hmm. or system design in general. So I didn't rely on a specific mm -hmm. uh, website. I just relied on my own uh, search on Google, whatever resource I find, either a video mm -hmm. or an article I was, I was taking my time to read those. Okay. Uh, top of mind, do you remember any YouTube channels that really helped you or any, uh, any bloggers that really helped you? This is just so that, you know, anyone watching this will also be able to reference that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can't tell you because I wasn't yeah, following a specific blogger or a specific YouTube channel. Whatever uh, I see uh, after I, I search for something mm -hmm. that matches what I'm searching for, yeah. then I was just uh, investing time in, in watching these videos mm -hmm. or reading those articles and then making my own uh, justifications out of them. But I wasn't following specific channels or, or, or blog. Yeah, you just like, go with the suggestions that come when you watch one particular video, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, Tariq, what do you think um, is the difference in preparation for a test automation engineer role when you're transitioning from a tier two company to a tier one company? 
and i'm and i'm specifically asking this because you have experience cracking into a tier one company into a fang plus company in fact so um, let us address how you know how is the preparation different from a tier two to a tier one and then from a tier one to a fang plus company what are the interview like you know how are the interviews different and so what makes the preparations different yeah so currently in the industry uh based on my observation and, and experience, the components and interviews uh, are, are almost the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you have components related to coding, mm -hmm. you have components in the interview related to uh, your knowledge and, and testing in general, and then you have a component where they, uh, they measure your own uh, ability to, to think, to interact with others, yeah. Uh, if, to see if you are a culture fit in a company or not. Uh, so these are usually the three main components. Usually the system design or the test design falls under the umbrella of the your testing skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. So these are the three main components based on my observation. And uh, your preparation shouldn't matter if it's a tier one or tier two or whatever tier is the company. Because the difference would be only about the complexity mm. of the questions that you will get. Okay. Uh, apparently, in, in Fang plus companies, uh, they have a higher bar. At least this is the assumption in the, in the industry, which means, uh, let's say, for example, in coding questions, they will ask much harder questions than, let's say, startups. But, but that's a, a very vague assumption because some startups they really ask very complicated questions mm -hmm. so that's why you shouldn't rely on this assumption uh, to to prepare only for very easy questions when you apply for uh, a startup or a non fang plus company so it, it varies it varies on, based on the company based on the person based on the team that interviews uh, so my own recommendation is not to differentiate between uh, the different tiers of companies always prepare as much as you can for these components of interviews uh, because you never know uh, the, the, the complexity of the questions that you will get. How is, um, can you tell us a little bit about your interview rounds while interviewing with Twitter? So Twitter aligns with the industry when it comes to uh, interviews for test related roles mm -hmm. when it comes to these three components that I mentioned. Yeah. Again, it's the coding exercise your knowledge and testing in general, that mm -hmm. includes uh, test design and sometimes system design. Mm -hmm. And also the third component is if, if you are a culture fit in the company or not. Yeah. So we we interview in those three different uh, aspects and we cover these three different components. Sometimes we do two interviews in coding, two in, 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 in test design and test knowledge, and then usually one in culture fit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's one coding exercise and two system design, sometimes two system design and one coding exercise. So sometimes we we change that based on the uh, the role itself, if it was a senior role, staff role, or a junior or an intern. But, uh, but the gist of it is that we covered those three components that I mentioned. Got it. So, um you know, um, what are the typical job responsibilities of a software uh, test engineer? And and does, uh, you know, your journey at Twitter, does Twitter stick to those typical job responsibilities? So let's first talk about, you know, what are what are the day-to-day -day responsibilities of a software test or, or a test automation engineer? Sometimes it, it varies based on the company, mm -hmm. but in Twitter, we have three roles mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to test engineering in general. Mm -hmm. We have the the manual QA mm -hmm. engineer role, mm -hmm. which uh, they they work with, with teams to test certain features or projects. They do only manual testing, mm -hmm. uh, and there is no uh, coding or automation expectation from them. Okay. So that's one role. The other role is test engineer, mm -hmm. uh, and that role uh, acts uh, as a kind of a hybrid uh, role in, in Twitter, which means 
you have expectation from you to manually test certain features or projects. And at the same time, it's expected from you to automate uh, test cases. So you work closely with your engineering teams to incorporate those test cases in, mm -hmm. in the build pipeline and mm -hmm. just find ways to leverage and make use of these test cases that you automate. So that's the second role, mm -hmm. a hybrid role between uh, manual QA and automation. And the third role, the third role that we have, uh, which is uh, a complete automation role, you work uh, with your teammates uh, as test automators or automation engineers, to be more specific, to build uh, automation frameworks, to build infrastructure, to build toolings that will help other team members. So these are the three main roles that we have in Twitter. And I saw that in the industry also, uh, it, it always fall under these three. Sometimes it's a mix between multiple mm -hmm. uh, roles. Sometimes it's only one. But usually when we talk about this engineering, it's, it's, it's one of these three. In Twitter, we have those three. Got it. So you're, differentiated. you're saying that there is not a lot of difference in the role of a test engineer at Twitter and other companies. Uh, when I say other companies, I'm also talking about uh, the non-tier one companies. Um, like, say someone's working at a tier two company and then they move to a, a Twitter. What is the dif Is there any difference um, in their job responsibilities or in the way things get done? Really, the so based on my experience, because I did that, I moved from mm -hmm. startup to yeah. Twitter. Yeah, I didn't see much of difference when it comes of uh, applying your own knowledge yeah. and your testing mindset. The testing yeah. mindset that you have, you will apply it anywhere. Got it. Because in general, what we do is that we test software, mm -hmm. regardless of what we use to test. Mm -hmm. Is it are we using our own hands to do manual testing? Are we writing code to automatically test this application. Uh, but in general, we are testing software. And this testing mindset, we, mm -hmm. we will take it and apply it anywhere we go. The differences are the set of tools that we work with, uh, the programming language that we will use, uh, the internal toolings that the company use to, to do different things. Uh, so this is the only thing that uh, that usually changes between companies. The tech stack and anything around it, yeah. which will take some time to learn, but after you learn and you get good at it, the same testing mindset that you have, you will apply it and of course you will improve on it. So since you're talking about this, Tariq, what are the uh, different automation tools or frameworks that you built while working at uh, Twitter? Yeah, so uh, I didn't build personally mm -hmm. uh, testing frameworks. I wasn't part of the team that built frameworks. I, uh, I used frameworks that are, built, that are built by, uh, by uh, my other teammates. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Twitter, I used two frameworks. The first one is based on uh, an open source uh, Java, uh, JavaScript framework called Test Cafe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's somehow popular right now. It doesn't use Selenium. It uses another technology as a proxy to 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 leverage bringing up uh, browsers without the need of uh, drivers like what Selenium uh, relies on. So we use that for a while to just specifically only web, and then uh, there was a team decision and an org decision to build another framework. That, uh, that is based on Java, we use Selenium and Appium, uh, and then the team, um, very smart team, they created some kind of an abstraction layer where you write the test case only once, and then you can execute that test case on, on web and mobile at the same time with certain configurations that you need to play with. So this is the other framework that I'm using in, in Twitter. Previously, uh, in the previous company, we built a framework. Also, we transitioned. The first framework that we built it was using Robot Framework, which is, again, an open source uh, keyword-driven framework where you can write these cases and keywords either in Python or Java. And then 
after some uh, some troubles that we had with the framework, we transitioned to Java plus Selenium uh, to build automated tests for the web application that we had. Yeah, so this, these are the experiences that I have when it comes to building yeah. and using frameworks. So what's, what's the typical team structure of a test engineering team at uh, Twitter? You did touch upon this earlier with another question. I just wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit. You mentioned that there are three types of test engineering roles. How does it, how does it fit? Um, how does that apply in Google's test engineering team? So, uh, yeah, so I'll add on, on what I covered when it comes yeah, to the yeah. three different roles that we have. So, uh, so the org has these three different roles, mm -hmm. and uh, that doesn't mean that each role uh, work with each other. Mm -hmm. They have a specific engineering manager, no. So each engineering manager that we have in the organization, mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, different reports with different uh, backgrounds. So okay. an, engineering, an, engineer, an engineering manager can have test engineers plus uh, SDEX plus manual engineers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we are divided based on uh, what engineering org we are belonging to. For example, do we belong to, to ads and revenues or do we belong at consumer facing mm -hmm. uh, features and applications? Uh, so this is how the team is, is divided, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that's it actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what I wanted to cover. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, I have heard that, you know, especially for ML roles, it's easier when you're in the organization working as a software engineer to transition to make that uh, jump in a fan company. It's not so easy when you're applying as a fresh software engineer and, you know, trying to get into an ML role. In, a, in an Apple or a Google, in a Twitter, etc. I don't know how true that is. I've heard that from different instructors. But do you think that also applies to test engineering? Or is it easier? Is it not that difficult to make that transition to a test engineer? So, for, exa mean? for example, if you're not in a FANG Plus company and you want to, you know, take up a role as a test engineer, is it easy to you know, to get that role, or do you have to get into a Twitter in a, in a, in a different role and then make that internal transition? Uh, so you're describing someone who would want to join yeah. say, the test, test engineering, engineering team at a Fang Plus company. Correct. And uh, in order to reach to that role, they join as a different role. Yeah, is that the and case? Then transition within the company. Yeah, is that the case? Because I've heard that's the case with ML, ML engineering roles. M machine learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Europe, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, so it's difficult to comment on this mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, it, it could it could be the case. It mm -hmm. couldn't be the case. Uh, every person's experience is different. I'm sure that it happened and it worked with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We have, for example, people in the company that branch out. Yeah. So we have a branching out uh, uh, strategy or option where people who are not happy with their current team or role, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they can branch out to different, completely different roles. So okay. For example, if you are a product manager, yeah. you can branch out to be an engineering manager. Oh. Or you can branch out to be a test engineer. And this is and at this, Twitter? This is at Twitter and this also applies to, to other companies okay. in Meta, for example, in Google and Apple. Yeah. All of them have the same option. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, usually it is it is supported by the uh, the leadership and the mm -hmm. managers of these companies because yeah. they prefer to to keep the talents yeah. within the company rather than them leaving and going to yeah. other companies. Yeah. True. So this option exists in companies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but but how easy it is? Is it complicated? Uh, it could be because when you branch out from a role to a different role, it's like you are interviewing for that role. So it's not like you are within the company, then you get a safe pass and then you yeah. will transition to that team, new team easily. No, you will go through the same process mm -hmm. by doing those interviews. All right. So if you go to Twitter, for example, as a, mm -hmm. I don't know, like a customer success manager, completely not technical, mm -hmm. and you want to branch out to a test engineering uh, role, yeah. this could happen. This this is possible, definitely. But you need to have the skills 
to pass the interview mm -hmm. as if you were outside of Twitter applying to, to Twitter. Got it. What is um, what is like the career roadmap for a test engineer's role at um, at Twitter or any of the top tier companies? After being a test engineer, a senior test automation engineer, what what comes next? What are the different po possibilities for someone in this role? Yeah. Uh, so usually it's it's you decide if you want to maintain the, or stay in, in an IC role mm -hmm. or individual contributor yeah. role or you want to go to the management, man management track. Mm -hmm. So if you, st if you stay within the IC role, then after senior, uh, for us, we have staff, mm -hmm. we have senior staff, and then uh, I think we have principal too. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but for example, we have only limited less than five people as staff mm -hmm. engineers. Mm -hmm. We don't have senior staff. Mm -hmm. It's a very senior level level to, to get to. Yeah. Uh, so usually, yeah, you just like keep practicing in, in this uh, this career path. And then, of course, your responsibilities change as you keep growing. Uh, so okay. I know that, that the same applies to Google also and Apple and Meta as well. All right. So, um, you know, does working for a Twitter or a Facebook, or, uh, sorry, a Meta, Apple, all of these companies, does it give you like a huge advantage uh, for your, you know, for your career or the way forward? Do companies really love candidates coming from Twitter or from, you know, any of the fan companies? It, it definitely is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the case because when you apply to any company, uh, it is, it's a matter of uh, you marketing yourself, you yeah. marketing your own image yeah. Yeah. in order to attract recruiters mm -hmm. or attract whoever is trying to recruit mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then if you have a really good company that has strong engineering uh, inside of it yeah if you have that experience then definitely will become attractive uh, to recruiters so it definitely helps uh, be for example myself because only because I have Twitter in my resume and in my yeah. say LinkedIn page, I get a lot of uh, recruiting calls mm -hmm. and, and emails saying that we see that you are in Twitter, we like your experience, blah blah. Yeah, we will. We would love to to have a conversation with you. I'm sure that applies to to my colleagues and from other yeah. companies who are well known uh, worldwide. So it definitely helps. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean that, of course, if you don't have that company yeah. in your name, in your resume, you wouldn't get uh, calls. But what matters eventually is that you 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 market yourself well, and then you make sure that you have an attractive uh, profile. Yeah. So you know, you're a test engineer. You know, everyone has this uh, you know this passion for what they do. So I want to know what makes test engineering more unique than all the other technical domains. If you had to give us, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I personally love interacting with people. Yeah. And I, I, I love uh, the exposure to different parts of the yeah. SDLC, the Software Development Lifecycle. Yeah. And I think one of the uh, few roles that give you this, this exposure is the test engineer. Because you interact with, with everyone closely, you mm -hmm. interact with the person who defines the requirements, usually it's the PM. Yeah. You interact closely with the engineering team who build the features. You interact closely sometimes with the users and you wear the hat of a user yeah. uh, in order to test the application. Uh, if you are in also an automation role that gives you also exposure to the source code, you understand how the application works also from the ground up. Mm -hmm. uh, that gives you also the ability to write code. Uh, sometimes you have the freedom to to automate tools that will help you uh, do your work better and more more efficiently. So, yeah, it's it's, it's multiple things. It's uh, if I want to summarize my answer, it's the the ability to network with so many people within the project lifecycle, and you have the ability to to 
to approach and work with the application of the features that you test from the user perspective. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have the ability to, to write code, you have exposure to the source code, you can contribute to it, you can write your own tools to make your life more efficient. So these are the things that I love most about uh, being a test engineer. Okay. So Tarek, you mentioned that you know you need to have this ability to network. You need to like to uh, you need to enjoy having conversations with people, and that's also why you love doing what you do. How um, how important or how is this tested in a in an interview? So I'm talking about the non technical aspects. Uh, can you touch upon a little bit about that? How is that tested for in a in a interview in a, in a te for a test engineering role, and how important that component is, the non technical component. Yeah, definitely. So in in all of the different components that we talked about, the three components, coding, <laughs> testing knowledge and design, yeah. and culture pet, yeah. every one of them, you will be graded and you will be tested for communication. Okay. So for example, in the testing, in the coding round, are you able to communicate well mm -hmm. with your interviewer? Are you able to understand the question, communicate back your thought process? Uh, you discuss the the question as if you are discussing it with your teammate. Uh, so we look always for these signs when we interview people. We don't want just coders who, who don't communicate with their teammates. Mm -hmm. That's for the coding round. For the uh, system design, testing design rounds, mm -hmm. also it's there is no coding there. So it's pure communication yeah. and testing your knowledge and how would you apply that knowledge in the question that we give you. And this back of back and forth communication between the interviewer and the interviewee. Uh, are you able to communicate cl clearly? Do you, do you ask good questions? Uh, do, you, do you answer mm. uh, uh, in, in, a, in a good way, clear way? Yeah. So these, these things, they give us indication about the uh, interviewee. If they are good communicators, they would yeah. be really a good fit for the team or not. And then the third component that is mainly focusing on your character, mm -hmm. your culture fit, if you really will be a positive addition to the team or you will be a burden to the team. So in, in that, in those interviews, uh, you really just need to market yourself. You need to show off that you are, you are passionate about what you do, your, uh, your, your, uh, you're compassionate towards your teammates. You love interacting with them. Uh, you have those soft skills that yeah. that interviewers are looking for. So uh, it's, it's very important. We had a lot of times that we rejected inter interviewees because they didn't have that part. Even okay. though they were strong engineers, mm -hmm. still we rejected them because yeah. they didn't have the soft skills that will benefit us as, as a team. Thanks a lot, Tarek. This was great. Uh, that's a wrap from me. Do you have any uh, closing words? What's your What's your takeaway advice for any aspiring software test engineer? Like one golden advice. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so first, uh, trust in yourself that you can do well in, in interviews. Uh, always think big. Big things will happen to you always apply as much as you can. Uh, it's, it's just a law of numbers. The more applications you send, the more the odds that you will get calls back. Make sure that you have interactive, uh, attractive profiles, whether it's, it's your resume, it's your, your LinkedIn page, your website, GitHub page, whatever it is. Make sure it's polished, it looks good. Uh, make sure to reach out to recruiters, uh, always brush up on your knowledge when it comes to these three components that we talked about in interviews and always prepare, prepare, prepare. Uh, preparation makes perfect, as they say. And uh, yeah, whenever there is a will, there is a way. And if you aim for something, you will definitely do it. Good luck to everyone who's, who's listening. And yeah, thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much, Tarek, for taking the time out. I know it's uh, late there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, my pleasure.